Hi, and welcome to Optum TV. I'm Stephen Adams, and today I'm joined by Dr. Joseph Prowse, co-founder and chief scientific officer of Connector Therapeutics, which is based in Barcelona. Hi, Joseph. Hi, Stephen. Good to be here at Optimum TV. Great to have you on. So Connector has developed a first-in-class therapy for fragile X syndrome. Let's start off talking about Connector. And where's it come from? What are your objectives? And what milestones have you achieved to date? Uh, yes, Stephen. Uh, Connector is a clinical stage biotech company uh, located in Barcelona, as you commented. We uh, focus on the development of uh, new first-in-class neuroplasticity modulators for the treatment of a variety of uh, CNS on med medical needs with uh, an initial focus in pediatric uh, neurodevelopmental disorders. Uh, Connector was founded in 2019 along with our current CEO, Jordi Fabrega. And in 2020, we were joined by our lead investor, uh, Inver Redin, who assured the funds to move this very promising the preclinical asset we had at, the, at that time, CTH 120, to the doors of uh, clinical trials, proof of concept in humans. And this is where we are now. We are going to start the, a phase two trial in fragile X syndrome adult patients in a couple of months. So very excited right now. Okay, you've made a lot of progress in a short amount of time. Fragile X syndrome is not something everybody knows about. It's a genetically driven condition and that results in severe cognitive and behavioral impairment. So you briefly mentioned Connector's CTH120, and that's a first-in-class therapy for Fragile X syndrome. How is it a first-in-class therapy? Yes, Stephen, uh, as you comment, uh, Fragile X syndrome is of uh, genetic origin. Uh, it is due to an unusual repeat in the fMR1 gene, which in turn uh, leads to a uh, mis-expression or lack of expression of a crucial protein in uh, neural development called fMRP. Uh, CTH120, what we do is we want to bring back to a normal pattern the CNS tissue, which is shows this uh, loss of uh, connection among neurons, this uh, abnormal uh, connection among dendritic spine and morphology of dendritic spines, which assure these neuronal connections. So we like to talk about disease-modifying therapy. We have seen in a variety of uh, preclinical experiments not only how CTH120 is able to restore the cognitive capabilities, the behavioral capabilities of preclinical animal models, but also how the tissue is remodeled and the uh, connection among neurons and dendritic spine are restored to wild-type pattern in a knockout model. Okay, so CTH120 is a neuroplasticity modulator. It literally changes the shape of the brain. So neuroplasticity is the property of the brain to adapt both to internal and external stimuli uh, and is essential in, uh, in the processes like uh, cognition, learning, reading, all the processes that the brain is responsible for and uh, is uh, affected in a variety of uh, neurodevelopmental disorders. Lots of people have been looking at it for a long period of time. What's the research landscape like for it? There is a lot of interest in the field now, probably something that we didn't find at the time we started the research in some years ago. Now there is a lot of interest in the field, not only fragile X itself, but other neurodevelopmental disorders, autism spectrum disorders, Red syndrome, brother wheel syndrome, among, among others. Now the landscape in fragile X includes uh, two molecules in phase three clinical trials, probably three more molecules at the level of phase two, and also a lot of research going on at the preclinical stage. Being a condition of genetic origin, there is, of course, the hypothesis that gene therapies or the advanced therapies will play an essential role. We think they will, but probably they are more in their infancy now. So we'll need to wait. Probably right now, all, all the molecules in development uh, correspond to the small molecule realm. And uh, by extension, not only fragile X, but other neurodevelopmental disorders are very much investigated. There is a recent success for the first molecule, the trophinetide launched for the treatment of Red syndrome, which uh, shares some of the features of uh, fragile X as well. And we think that these 
research and this activity will uh, evolve very well in the following years as big pharma industries have show a lot of interest in, in the field. And this will be very important for licensing out activities for biotechs like Connecta. Okay. You talked about treating children and the fact that your program is focused on treating children. Why, when it comes to FXS and other neurodevelopmental disorders, is it so important to treat children? Presumably you can have a bigger effect. That's, that's the fact, Stephen. And the challenge with these conditions that they are very disruptive, not for the patient, him or herself, but also for the families, the problems with learning processes, anxiety, hyperactivity, epilepsy. So it's a very complex syndrome. And just to share some numbers, only 10% of patients can live on their own when they reach adulthood. 90% uh, of families need uh, some kind of support. This is psychological support, social support, economic support. So therefore, the, we think that the sooner we act, the better. So this way we will take full advantage of uh, creating convenient learning curves, sociability curve, because this lasts for a lifetime. And the challenge with tragic syndrome is that symptoms start very early at age two. So the, the, the problems are detected. So the sooner we act, the, the better. And this is why we wanted to also develop in terms of, uh, of clinical trials, our molecule for the pediatric population as well. And lastly, Connected Therapeutics has received two and a half million euros in an EIC grant, as I understand it, to accelerate CTH120. How exactly are you going to use that money? Um, yeah, we were very f fortunate, or very glad at the beginning of this year to announce that we were uh, selected for the instrument called the EIC Accelerator, the European Innovation Council Accelerator Program. A very competitive program in the sense that uh, only 70 out of uh, 1,000 participants received the grant. This initial grant, which will be followed by a financing round in 2027, will allow to advance the pediatric development. What we are doing now is we are starting with additional preclinical efficacy studies, toxicology studies, also streamlining what is called the pediatric investigational plan to be presented in front of the EMA. We expect to finalize that in 2026 and be ready for the pediatric clinical trial in 2027. And this is where these CAC funds are going to. Fantastic. Dr. Joseph Kraus of Connector Therapeutics, thanks very much for being on Optimum TV. Okay. Thank you very much, Stephen. It's been a pleasure. Are you watching Optimum TV? In our bite-sized episodes, we talk to European life science leaders about the hottest trends, innovations, and capital market developments in the sector. To subscribe, visit at Optimum Comms on YouTube. You can also watch all available episodes on our website, OptimumComs.com.